Formula 2 2019 was back this weekend in Azerbaijan. And before you jump to any conclusions, Formula 2 was actually decent in Baku this year. Formula 1, uh, not so much, but Formula 2 had all the ingredients for a spicy race. And boy, did we get a flaming hot one. Crashes galore. Complete carnage galore, even behind the safety car. Crazy results, first time podiums, people looking like they were going to be winning the race and then a last minute sort of switching was going on. It, it was utter carnage, which is sort of what we're used to in Azerbaijan, sort of what we're used to in Formula 2. But it was the second round of the 2019 season and on the screen now you'll be able to see the feature race results. And I tell you what, Formula 2, a little bit like Formula E this season, although not quite, has this, and I think this is going to be a theme throughout the year, has this really unpredictable nature, which is why, well, what the reason that got me into Formula 2 in the first place is that it's this spec series, and going into each weekend, you just never know who's going to be on top. Last time out in Bahrain, it was Latifi and Giotto who really looked the two that potentially could be championship winners this season, as well as Nick DeVries. Those were the three that I came away from Bahrain thinking, yeah, they look like the kind of drivers that are going to be the stars of this season. Then we come <laughs> to Azerbaijan, and while that wasn't completely flipped on its head, we had guys like Jack Aiken, the winner of the feature race, almost come out of nowhere. Aiken actually had a difficult start to the season in Bahrain, had a strong qualifying in Bahrain, but I believe he made contact in the opening few laps, and that really hindered his progress throughout the field. But this time out, started... Not near the front, I think he was 6th place on the grid in actual fact, but had a really strong start, worked his way up into contention, got himself past Nobuharu Matsushita, who was leading. He eventually had to retire from the race, but he was on pole position. That was a bit of a surprise that he was on pole position, but nevertheless, Aiken a really strong drive and had to do several safety car restarts. We saw absolute carnage from a number of drivers, including Mick Schumacher, Giuliano, Giuliano Alessi, Guanyan Zhu, Tatiana Calderon. All these guys, only 13 finishers in the feature race. Nick De Vries was on the podium. Jordan King and for MP Motorsport was on the podium. It was a crazy feature race and even I know, I know Formula One has put out a little sort of highlight reel if you want to call it that of the weekend but I tell you what they put in five highlights but there was endless and at the moment I don't actually have any way of re-watching the race I'm gonna have to wait till it comes back around on Sky Sports F1 which is a pain but it's gonna have to do for the moment so I'm trying to go as best I can off of memory but we saw Guanyan Zhu on a straight, on a straight, hit the wall. Now, of course, there's a little bit more context. And we saw a few drivers, even in Formula One, Antonio Giovinazzi made this mistake of going down the main straight, just picking up too much speed, which is a crazy thing to say about a Formula One or a Formula Two driver. But Zhu picked up far too much speed and then couldn't slow the car down enough similar to Daniel Ricciardo and Max Verstappen last season in Baku ended up making a void in action went over the curb into the wall that was crazy but probably apart from Aiken winning the race the biggest thing I will remember this race is for is the safety car restart where they, they moved the safety car line this time so it was over the start finish straight which was a little bit strange but what it meant was that we got these amazing shots of cars just completely gaggled up the whole grid almost is covered by a matter of meters all side by side looks crazy and in fact it was a bit too crazy contact in the midfield Giotto was caught in it Delatraz was caught in it, Sergio Sete Camera was caught in it. Those guys just completely having really strong races out of the race. Out of the, behind the safety car during a restart. So much carnage that we had to have another safety car before the safety car had even come in. Well, it had come in and then, you know what I mean, before the race had restarted. It was, it was bizarre. But Aitken for me, driver of the day in a feature race, just 
This is what he needs to do now. And he showed glimmers of pace last year, but not on a consistent basis. And that's right, ART let him go. That's why his teammate for ART last season, George Russell, is now in Formula 1 because he had that consistency. Aitken was lucky this year to keep his Renault backing, but I struggle to see him having a third year of Renault backing if he has another season like he did last year. But a really good start to the season by Jack Aitken. In the race two, in the sprint race, the shorter race of the two, and as always, if you're not too sure what's going on with Formula 2 and how the weekend works, there's a video up on my channel, a Formula 2 beginner's guide, and all that sort of stuff is in there for you. But anyway... The sprint race, not as carnage, but still, 13 finishers, still carnage. Um, this time, Nicholas Latifi taking the victory. Then in second place, first time podium for Juan Manuel Correa, who Johnny Herbert, the commentator, called him Correa. Herbert, bless him, struggling with some of the pronunciations. They are fairly difficult this season in Formula 2, but it is Correa. Johnny, I'll have to correct you on that one. Driving for the Sauber Junior team, that was a bit of a surprise podium. Was sort of aided by how the reverse qualifying does in the sprint race. He was strongly aided in that, but managed to hold on to the, in the race, which was a really impressive job from Correa. Securing that P2, actually, probably one of the biggest surprises of the weekend. Jack Aitken, obviously on the reverse grid, pole working back up onto the podium, so that's a double podium for him. That's really elevated him up in the standings. And Nick De Vries, who was second in the feature race, fourth in the sprint race, he also had a, a pretty strong weekend for ART. Fifth place, Mick Schumacher. I tell you what, I didn't want to overhype Schumacher this season. I, I thought to myself, you know what, Dan? Careful this year with Formula 2 because ever since, I'm thinking a lot of people, their eyes are going to be on Schumacher and we've got to be careful because he's done well in previous categories but you don't want to judge him on the name rather than the talent if, if you understand what I mean and I think in the first race a lot of people as well predicting that he's going to win the championship I think that was extremely unfair and I still think it is unfair but what I will say he had an awesome weekend he had an absolutely awesome weekend. And although he made a mistake in the feature race, DNF'd, it was a very small mistake with big consequences. And that's the nature of a street circuit. So he'll learn from that. And that's why I've said several times I think he needs two seasons in Formula 2 before he should even be considered for Formula 1. Anyway, the sprint race, he was incredible. Multiple overtakes, worked his way up to fifth considering he'd started way outside the top 15 a really good job from Mick Schumacher my driver of the day in the sprint race the sprint race was had a definite well as it does always had a very strange sort of feel to it this time because rather than the guys on reverse grid pole, pole really setting up a strong race for themselves because we'd had so many DNFs it was actually some of the slower guys that were starting on reverse grid pole so you had the guys like Sean Galeo who struggled in the feature race and, and did struggle in the sprint race but you saw him leading for quite some time but it was almost inevitable that he was going to be overtaken so it was a really interesting dynamic in this sprint race and it was all about if guys could overtake quickly overtake as cleanly as possible and it was, it was just really nice to see that we saw a completely different switch over the weekend in Formula 2 which again that's what the whole setup is so don't get me wrong it, it's not Completely bizarre, but I think it, the setup worked particularly well this weekend because there were so many DNFs. Formula 2 has always going to have some special moments, but yeah, Schumacher, that was a very strong performance. Sete Camera, P6, he's another one that I'm looking at this weekend and also last weekend. And I know it's not a, <laughs> a two-race season or a four-race season in actual fact, but Sete Camera... In particular, there, there are other drivers, but Sete Camera was probably one of the ones I was going into this season expecting to be up there in the championship. But a difficult Azerbaijan has really put him on the back foot. One podium in Bahrain, I think he got third in the feature race, and then fourth in the sprint race, I believe, which isn't bad. But a difficult weekend this time out. Luca Giotto as well, he's had a really difficult weekend in overall in Azerbaijan so it's looking like it's going to be a season where consistency is going to be king and at the moment as 
we go and head into the championship standings, there's only really been one guy who's been doing that, and that is Nicholas Latifi. Comfortably in front in the championship, Jack Aitken after, as we've mentioned, and a really, really good weekend in Azerbaijan. He moves up into P2. We'll just mention, just looking at the grid now, set a camera, managed to get a first and a second in Bahrain. So a very good job from Sete Camera. So I'll have to readjust that. But again, this weekend, very different, very different story. Zero points, six points. Luca Gotto, the same in third place in the championships. Two points in the feature race, no points in the sprint race. Nick DeVries is hanging in there. He struggled in Bahrain, but again, was unlucky in Bahrain. Showed the pace, a little bit like Aitken, but the race just didn't really fall into his hands and then sometimes in Formula 2 when the feature race doesn't go your way, the sprint race is even harder. Correa moves himself up into P6. Again, Bahrain really struggled this time out. A completely different story. Jordan King with that surprise podium also moves himself up into P7. Louis Delatraz, another one that I think is going to do well this year. No points in Azerbaijan. Mick Schumacher, he a ninth place isn't too bad. Antoine Hubert, one of my, who I, well, I've said a few times, I think is going to be a big star in Formula 2. He wasn't really anywhere this weekend. So, back here is over. Next time is Spain, which means we're not skipping any Formula 1 races. We're going straight back to Formula 2. But I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.